So first of all, I wanna say that I'm dedicating my talk to Sandra Pikowski, director and curator of the Ellen Gallery, Karen Antaki, who was director curator after her, Christina Huno, who you can see here in the floral dress, and you, Rosalind Pepal, who uh, wrote the catalog um, along with Karen Antaki. And um, I also want to express my uh, deep appreciation for having had so many happy years in the Department of Art History. And you can see this is at the Ellen Gallery. And I don't know if any of you can recognize any of the people in the audience, but I think that that is a Sandra's back that we see wearing that right top. So uh, with that note of thanks and appreciation, I will begin my talk. Uh, the Montreal artist, Jory Smith, who lived between 1907 and 2005, had a distinguished career spanning 70 years. This presentation focuses on Smith's visual and textual reflections of the people of Charlevoix County in the 1930s. Smith was inspired by the ethnographer Marius Barbeau, who believed that Quebec's traditional village life expressed a wholesome and enduring national character. Simultaneously, she shared Dr. Norman Bethune's concerns about the lack of decent medical services for the poor and sick. An analysis of Smith's Charlevoix County, 1930, a memoir of these years substantiates the contradictory values and ideas expressed by Ms. Smith in her works from these years. During the 1930s, Smith lived in Charlevoix for periods of time with her husband, Jean Bayardy. Both were graduates of the École des Beaux-Arts de Montréal. During this era, they traveled around the region with Barbeau to aid him with his documentation of Charlevoix culture, which was believed to have remained unchanged over the centuries. As the founder of Canadian Folklore Studies, Barbeau, who worked at the National Museum of Man in Ottawa from 1911 to 1969, was responsible for a vast archive of Indigenous and French Canadian folk songs, legends, and artifacts. At 63, Smith wrote her memoir. She writes that Barbeau taught us so much, drawing from a boundless fund of knowledge and experience. And he communicated his own enthusiasm for the folklore of the region. Marius's objective was to record the songs and folklore of Charlevoix. Smith shared Barbeau's enthusiasm for these performances. This is conveyed pictorially in Vieille chez Elois Trembé, Saint Urbain, which shows villagers gathered and entertaining themselves in the Trembé's kitchen by singing traditional songs. The prominence in this painting of playful babies and young children reflects the Catholic Church's encouragement of large families and belief that birth control was evil. Smith's close observation of each figure in Vieille reveals her readiness to see these people as individuals and her desire to learn about their lives. This attentiveness contrasted sharply with Barbeau's more specific focus. She writes that, quote, as fascinated as he went with men in his works, man as an individual didn't seem to interest Marius, at least not as a field of scientific study. There were moments when these people would suddenly interrupt their stories or song to embark on some tangent of personal interest to them. Whenever such depression would occur, a look of patient boredom would come over Marius's face as if to say he were thinking, get on with it, get on with it. Personally, I often long for these digressions to go on forever, but for Marius, it was strictly business, no personalities. 
Barbeau was also interested in the so-called primitive paintings of Charlevoix artists like Simone Marie Bouchard. He believed their art was the basic material for the future arts of Canada and that modern art could not develop in a way that reveals originality unless these artists were known by our artists and creators of present day. So he said, her husband Pierre at that time, Pierre imitated in his own paintings of Charlevoix, what he perceived as the essential qualities of primitism. Smith's memoirs contains three such examples. Pyodi had created these paintings and had Bouchard turned them into hook rugs, which were popular with summer tourists. Smith did not share Barbeau's belief about modern art. A founding member of the Contemporary Art Society, she was recognized for her modern portrayal of the mood and character of the person. The portrait of Rose Fertin included in her memoir, Rose's large almond eyes are set against a sallow complexion. Her gaze is tired, sorrowful, and perceptive. Rose, sick with tuberculosis, died soon after the completion of this painting. In none of the paintings Smith chose for her book or exhibited are direct representations of the terrible illnesses and subsequent deaths that afflicted the Charlevoix community during this era. This contradiction characterizes Smith's recollections. She maintains that, quote, large families had nothing beyond what they could drag out of a recalcitrant land, but they were together and they were happy, unquote. Elsewhere, she emphasizes the omnipresent diseases and deaths experienced by the family. She writes, it was not uncommon for newborns to die from exposure, a result of the priest insisting that baptism take place at the church within a few hours of birth, no matter how cold or stormy the weather was, unquote. The people did not believe in seeking medical assistance because of the cost. They also believed there was little the doctor could do to help them. Smith writes, I watched a child die of tuberculosis just down the road from us. In her memoir, Smith includes a painting of Rose Tremblay, her gaze suggestive of dreamlike steak, standing in front of her mother who sits in a typical French Canadian rocking chair, relaxed and gently smiling. Nowhere in sight is Rose's older sister Blanche, who was paralyzed by polio. Though Smith writes about her in the comments below the painting and in the text of Charlevoix County. The image of Blanche only appears in a series of Smith's watercolors that the artist donated to Ar Archives Canada. Smith writes, the tiny child by then 13 years old, spent her days sitting in a special rocking chair by the stove. Blanche was unable to speak, but had learned to express herself eloquently with her eyes alone. Her eyes were so extraordinarily bright and penetrating in their wisdom that I often sensed that she had access to the inner vaults of my mind. Smith's concern for the sick and dying children is in keeping with the preoccupations of her friend, Dr. Norman Bethune, who was an advocate of socialized medicine. Bethune was also an amateur artist. Like Bethune, Smith was a member of the League of Social Reconstruction. The League called for major social and economic reforms and free health care for the sick and the poor. Its members were intellectuals who were against the church. And here you see the prominence of the church by Smith because of its repressive authoritarianism and excessive controls over all aspects of family life. 
Smith surely knew about the surgical procedure Bethune developed to help children recuperate from tuberculosis. In Night Operating Theater, painted by Bethune in 1936, he shows himself performing emergency lung surgery on a child in the middle of the night. The dramatic beam of light emphasizes the creative, even artistic activity of the surgeon. Bethune believed children's health could be improved through nurturing their artistic faculties. In the spring of 1936, he opened the Children's Creative Arts Center in his living room, where every Saturday morning, children received free art lessons given by artists such as Marion Scott and Fritz Brackner. Smith and Fayardy divorced in the 1940s, around the time he became a filmmaker at the National Film Board. Here you see primitive painters of Charlevoix, a National Film Board short film. She continued to remain in intimate contact with the people of Charlevoix County, with whom she had forged lifelong friendships during her happy times in the 1930s. It's unlikely that Smith kept up her contact with Barbeau. Her contact with Bethune ended when he died in 1939 in China, where he had gone as an avowed communist to help the people struggle led by Mao Zedong, operating on wounded soldiers on the front lines. Bethune's finger became infected and he died. Through exploring the relationship between word and image in Jory Smith, Charlevoix County, this brief presentation uncovers discrepancies in her intellectual development and creative production during the 1930s that connect to her friendships with Barbeau and Bethune, the former of whom dwelt on a joyful population and the latter a people downtrodden by disease and despair. Thank you.